An endocrine disruptor is a chemical that when uh, we are exposed to, it will affect the functioning of several systems in the body, like the endocrine system, the nervous system, um, reproductive system, uh, metabolism, etc. All these complex actions that coordinate what the organ, the organism, the body does. And uh, so the important part is that these effects are more severe when the organism is being developed. In other words, when you happen to be a fetus or a newborn, because there is where the organs are being formed. So the damage could be much more pronounced and irreversible. And I would like to add that we have studied this in rats and mice. And therefore, we know that there, not only it affects reproduction and all these effects that I have told you, behavior too, and also increases the uh, risk of contracting prostate and breast cancer or mammary cancer later on. So this is what an endocrine disruptor is. Endocrine disruptors not only are estrogens, we have talked about those because probably most of the chemicals found to disrupt the endocrine system have been estrogen mimics. But also there have been uh, chemicals found as herbicides, for example, and other agrochemicals that act as anti-androgens, that is the antagonize the male hormones. And uh, there are other compounds that have been found to affect the thyroid gland. So, and there is more that is being discovered because every day there is something more that is discovered about these chemicals. So that is why the definition I gave you is so broad because it's any chemical that can disrupt these complex regulatory systems. The formula, the, 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 the structure of the compound does not give away whether it is or it is not going to be uh, estrogenic. That's why we and others have adopted this uh, bioassay, this test that we have proposed, that it's called the e-screen, to measure exactly whether these compounds that don't look like the natural estrogen hormones that women have, whether they are estrogenic or not. We have been unfortunately exposed to synthetic estrogens starting in the 1940s when people uh, uh, women were exposed to uh, the synthetic estrogen called DES or diethylstilbestrol when they had uh, um, there were signs that they, they might abort the treatment of choice was to give large amounts of these synthetic estrogens uh, as a result years after the, uh, this happened uh, clinicians noted that there were uh, young women who came to the clinic uh, with symptoms of a very uh, uh, unique type of cancer in the vagina of these young women who were daughters of mothers who were exposed to the ES. Uh, of course, uh, that was received a lot of publicity, 
And uh, this was the basis of a line of investigation of colleagues of ours. And uh, when the, this uh, latest reincarnation of the synthetic, synthetic estrogens, the, the, they are the uh, endocrine disruptors that are estrogenic, uh, the connection was made. Of course, here we come with the same uh, uh, e uh, issue that synthetic estrogens are being uh, dropped on, in the environment and eventually this will have some uh, uh, consequence. The consequence was that people working in ecology noted that there were problems and specifically uh, uh, the, uh, the Richard Carson noticed that uh, animals were not reproducing. Uh, this was in the 1970s. And eventually, when uh, Theo Colburn realized that there were other connections, is when we started with the modern version of, of, uh, of the estrogen disruptors. Yes, the, the DS story probably affected, I mean, it's not knowing exactly how many women, but some people estimate uh, about 4 million or so were exposed in utero. Now, uh, when this finding, the finding of the clear cell carcinoma of the vagina, uh, was published. Immediately there was a ban on the use uh, of DS for treating miscarriages. And by the way, it has been shown, it had been shown a long time before this banning that it didn't prevent miscarriage. However, it was used uh, nonetheless. Interestingly, when all this happened, people looked into the effect of the ethylestilvestrol in rodents, in mice and rats. And uh, they, of course, utilized the type of dose that women were exposed to, which, by the way, it wasn't standard. There were many different uh, doses and many different treatments starting at different times. But for taking all this into consideration, mice and rats were exposed. And the syndrome was quite well reproduced in rodents. Practically everything that was found in uh, DS daughters were found, was found in rats and mice. At that point, they found that DS, exposure to DS, produced mammary cancer in rodents. Now, of course, the girls were, at that point, that had been exposed were young women. So this is uh, a lot early to look at whether or not breast cancer will happen in them. But now, in 2006, there was a paper following that cohort of women showing clearly that women that were exposed in utero to the ES have a higher risk of breast cancer than the ones that were not. But now these women are in their 50s. So what I try to say here is that if you wait long enough, what you find in rats uh, investing only one or two years of research, you will find in women uh, waiting 50 years or 60. So I think that the DS story provides us with the human rodent link. And since we cannot do, and it's not ethical to do human experimentation, we should use this link to interpret the data that are being gathered in mice and rats. Okay, it should be made clear that we are extrapolating uh, we 
have ex ex explored the possibilities that uh, uh, experimentation in rodents offer us, as I said, because they telescope a lot of information in the uh, shorter uh, timeline. And uh, we are uh, already aware that uh, uh, if we expose uh, uh, mice or uh, yes mice during uh, uh, the fetal stage, that is to say, we expose their mothers to uh, uh, environmental uh, environmentally relevant doses of BPA or bisphenol A. A number of uh, uh, effects can be uh, estimated. We have observed that uh, the uh, fetuses that have been exposed eventually, when they grow up, show lesions in the mammary gland as well as in the brain. And uh, uh, obesity is another sign that, that we have observed in these animals. Of course, once again, based on the exper ex experiences that uh, we have had and others have had with uh, DES, extrapolating again, we can be reasonable concern, reasonably concerned with the fact that this could happen eventually in human populations. Actually, I was part of the uh, author of a publication of the Endocrine Society that uh, called a, colleague, a, a group of people to write this paper. It's a position paper, the first time that the Endocrine Society does that. And in it, we, the society, is not only asking for more research, but also to invoke the precautionary principle because of the things Carlos said, and because it's not only what we were, Carlos was referring to, that is the research done in our laboratory, but another group has shown an increased, uh, uh, an increased susceptibility to prostate cancer in males. Another group had been studying the, uh, the functioning of the pancreas, and in adult animals and found that uh, bisphenol A also affects the functioning of the pancreas. And in a recent paper, this group is talking about um, altered glucose tolerance and other things that relate to diabetes and metabolic syndrome, but it's not yet uh, clear. I mean, not all the dots are connected, but these people found things in the pancreas and in how the organism metabolizes uh, sugars that would point in that direction, let's say. 